Joe. Are you there, Joe? Joe. Hello. <laughs> Joe. Joe. <laughs> Dan. Dan. Are are you there? I was resting. Oh. It, I was resting. I'm checking out the inside of my eyelids. Are you a little uh behind on your sleep? I am a lot behind on my sleep. I am sunburnt. <laughs> I am physically and mentally exhausted. Yes, that. Other than that, I'm fine. I know the feeling. <laughs> it is and we're and we are coming off of the heels here of the International Firewood Expo. That is the source of our uh, I guess fatigue. Yeah. And I didn't have to drive home 13 hours like you. Right. But you were doing a lot of running around. I was. I had a pedometer on me for the weekend, and I mailed it in to Ripley's Believe It or Not. And he sent a letter back saying they don't believe it. <laughs> a a one-day record for miles walked. Yes, <laughs> that was that was a lot of physical uh, expectations put on me, <laughs> and I think it was the mental part of it. I was I was um, I was pulled in a lot of different directions all the time, you know, the, for the setup too. Because I mean, everyone was chipping in, everyone was doing their part, but I kind of had the master plan in my head about who goes where and just having the one skid steer really um you know put a challenge on getting stuff moved in and fortunately for us just about everyone who pulled in with a flatbed with equipment also knew how to run a skid steer so we didn't like have to wait for the single operator to come around and and do it you know right yeah and the the setup and unloading and all that actually began Thursday afternoon. So you actually have had a couple days and then you were still there doing stuff on Sunday. So yeah, you had like four days worth of running around wearing many hats. It actually began on Tuesday when Easton made showed up with the 40 C and that was my first pivot because I was not expecting it. <laughs> And it's kind of big and it kind of like takes up a lot of space. And there was just really the only one logical location that it could go into. And, and there it went. Uh, and it was, it, it doesn't have trouble commanding attention to begin with, but you know, where it was setting, uh, they got some a one visibility. Yeah. They were like right down central main street alley as you came through the gates. Yeah, they did. Uh, but that's not to say that anyone else had a bad location because even the two big processors that came in later, they went on the outside of the wall. Uh, they were both happy because they everyone had to drive past them. That was the very first things they saw when you pulled onto the property. And that was the, tim the timber wolf. Yeah, the Timberwolf and the Brute Force, big processors. Right. Yeah, they were on the outside, and, and I th I think the layout was great. I didn't see any. Uh, there was great flow with um being able to walk in and either go left or right or right down the center and then, you know, circle around and yeah. figure eight. I mean, it was a good flow for attendees to see everything. I agree. And with the location of, like, the party tent, you know, Command Central where the raffle was, the T-shirt sales. Uh, everything just worked. And I don't think you could have been in a bad location. No, no, nope. but you probably did see why I started telling people, no, you know, I couldn't bring in any more, um, which I don't know the, 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 the internal struggle that I had through all of this was, you know, I wanted it to be significant. I wanted it to be impactful 
but I also have to face reality that I don't have the biggest of locations. And I had to be sensitive to the other trucking companies that rent this property and to the property owner who is very nice and very gracious. But, you know, uh, I turned away a bunch of manufacturers that could have come in if I'm, I'm saying maybe next year we can make it happen. Yep. Well, I, I was just going to say, let's hold off and get to the if next year bit will be happening. We'll, we'll save all that. Let's let's continue just reflecting on uh, the the first International Firewood Expo here this year. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I think it was great. I think for as much as you know you had to do, I think there wasn't anything. I didn't see any stone left unturned. I mean, I think you had everything covered. Well, thank you. I think if I'm, I'm going to self-assess here, I think the general overview of everything I think was pretty good. I think it was, well, I think it was dynamite. Everything yeah. from a macro level was great. Now there, within that, there's a couple things that ah, I dropped the ball here. You know, I had a blind spot there. Um, but no, none of the manufacturers, none of the vendors, exhibitors, whatever you want to call them, uh, were up. And I'm, I think I would have been able to tell. Yep. All of them were happy. And a lot, a lot, if not all, made sales or developed very strong sale leads. Uh, you know, for instance, Go Fast, what the heck? They sold every one of their wrappers they brought. They brought six wrappers. They sold all six of them. Serious? Oh, wow. Cool. They had nothing to take home with them. Yeah. Uh, Bob from uh, Wolf Ridge said that they had five sales, you know, that not the ones that they brought, but, you know, that they did paperwork on that would be getting made. Yep. Uh, e Easton made, uh, there was a couple that left. Uh, the one was left behind. The guy came the next day to get it. And, um, the the company that came from Wisconsin Firewood Automation uh, that Ben I think was their new employee. What a nice man! And I see you know he had a lot of attention. The Palix machine had a lot of attention. Yes, indeed, there was lots, <clears throat> lots yeah. to see, and and yeah, I think um, yeah, from what I I went around and kind of you know just kind of got a pulse check of everything and everyone I talked to both vendor and attendee everyone had nothing but good things to say so i think that was that was pretty cool to see because there was you know there was a lot of uh like on friday i was worried well number one about the weather i wasn't exactly sure how things would flow with the crowd and where you know the space that you had but like i said everything turned out great yeah it was nice um you had made the comment about the fact that it was in a wood yard, like a real wood yard, you know, with yes. rows of firewood. It was had this intimate nature about it where it was like the the land embraced everyone that came in, you know? Right. Yeah. I think yeah, that nice. added to the experience. It's it was different than like going to a big open field at like a fairgrounds or something where you know you know like being in an, the actual wood yard and having stacks of wood separating out things and dividing things up. I think it was great. Yeah. And then, and then there was a lot of wood made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I did my best because I knew that given the side of the yard with all of these machines that if they didn't set their area up correctly, they would get themselves boxed in and they would never be able to get their machines out. So we made a bunch of those IBC cages for them that we, when they got full, we could fork them around. Uh, and my dump trailers, which, you know, we have a rule. We never dump, our firewood never touches the ground, but what the heck, special occasion. So we were dumping them on the ground uh, to empty them out so that, you know, they could demonstrate their machines more. Marty, our good friend Marty from Lepo, who's the nation's best Bobcat dealer, uh, brought one of those articulated loaders and he was able to move stuff around, you know, so it wasn't like some big machine that was in everyone's way. Yep. Yeah, that was nice. And I even had a father and 
volunteer to stack wood for me too. I mean, oh. what the heck? I couldn't turn them down. Right. <laughs> yeah, there was there was every aspect of the firewood process was I think covered. The splitting, he even had the stacking. So yeah, it was it was good to see. Uh huh. We had wrappers. Fox Forestry brought those big bags that some people like to use. Yep. Uh, Fox Forestry, they pulled that trailer all the way from Maine. Ooh. And he had even sold stuff. He sold that big, um, that fire pit that kind of hangs from a chain. The Norwegian fire pit. Yeah. Yeah. They sold that. He was very happy from the for the event. Nice. Um, log Ox. Well, let's hold off on Log Ox here. We need to talk about them. Yes. Chain Locker. They were, they said that this was the most they have sold at any show that they've ever been to. So that would include, you know, I'm going to, let's use our air quotes here, legitimate shows, <laughs> you know, right. mine still has to establish itself for credibility, which I think we did this weekend, but that is what they were saying is, you know, the, the audience that we were able to attract, uh, the type of audience, the interest was zeroed right into a product such as what they've invented. Yep. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's one of the things compared to if maybe, you know, when you get mixed in with like even like logging or forestry or farming expos, the audience then becomes divided as well. Whereas the International Firewood Expo is the target audience is firewood related. Yeah. And the key was international because we did have an international contingency, manufacturers. So we had uh, the parent company is called, from Finland, TP Silva Oi. And in Finland, Oi stands for like Inc. Incorporated or LTD. Uh, they are the makers of Viapa, Palex, and Hacky Pilky. So there were people from the factory. It was Lowry and R2 from Finland uh, that came. And then from Canada, we had Andrew Easton and his team, the manufacturers of the Easton made wood splitters and processors. Uh, that was yes. really cool. Yeah, and then, and you know, hats off to the mayor of Cortland for her proclamations. That was a big deal. That was really cool. Yeah. And I was surprised at how many attendees were international. I mean, from Canada, you know, mostly Canada, obviously, because that's the closest other country. There that, were a <laughs> lot of Canadians there. There, there was you know? a lot of them. And so that was a big surprise. For and they're me. so and they're so nice. <laughs> they're yes. so polite. Those Canadians, aren't they? <laughs> yes, I actually. That so I nice. did go around and I um, captured a few um, sound bites from people. Uh, so at some point oh, we have to did? listen to those. I maybe want to do that right now, maybe. Well, do it right now. Yeah, do it right now. All right, let's go. Do you want to do all of them at the same time, or yeah, you want to do all of them at the same time, or you want to spread them out throughout the episode here? I think we just spend the next few minutes. We'll listen through them all, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Okay. All right. So here we go, back to the International Firewood Expo, and just out and about, out and about, talking to some of the the fans. Okay. It's a, what a great day here. Weather turned out phenomenal. Give us, give us a quick introduction. Quick introduction. Myself, I'm Bill Obermeyer. Some know me as Obi from Cincinnati, Ohio. I do not have a YouTube channel. I just enjoy being a wood hound, being outdoors, splitting, stacking firewood. And listening to the podcast. And listening to the podcast. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. The Woodhounds Podcast, the number one firewood podcast in the Ooh, world. Listen to absolutely, that. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Right. Wonderful time. Excellent time. Like All I said, right. weather turned out super and can't ask for anything better. Hello, Dennis Sargison from Niagara Falls, Canada. Glad to be here. Fabulous. It's a great, uh, great community here. It is. Community of firewood people and great people. Well, again, I think it's just about the community and uh, and uh, the people that are around here and seeing all the different uh, equipment and the different ideas. It's good stuff. Some of it's beyond me, but uh, I don't have well, enough wood. Yes, so my name is Paul. I'm coming from uh, West Bolton, Quebec, Canada. So how has been? How was the trip down? Perfect. It took us uh, nine hour and a half, roughly. It was our, our first time in Ohio, and the weather is just perfect, and the setup here is uh, even better. 
What has been your favorite part of the expo so far? Actually, meeting you. Oh, correct answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that again. Again, it was to meet you. Actually, we came here to see you and Joe. Ah, nice. I, I, I'm following you both on uh, YouTube religiously. It's always, uh, I mean, it's a pleasure to see you, Joe, Andrew from Eastern Maid. I haven't met other people from uh, Montreal also, so great show, great place. We have right here, Skitter Kev. Hey, how's it going? And James Baton. Hello. What do you think so far? Good, it's busy. Lots of people here. It's nice to see everyone out. What have, what have you liked seeing the most down here, Mr. Baton? Of course, it's the Eastern Maid booth, but uh, besides that, it's neat to see all the different vendors. Um, there's a lot more equipment and uh, different vendors here than I was probably expecting. Um, and it's great to see the uh, wood yard, like Joel's yeah. wood yard. It's uh, pretty nice. Here we are with another international traveler uh, to the international 21 fire. hours away. 21 hours. That's all it took me to get here. And I've got another 40 to go before I'm getting to my final destination. I'm headed yeah. right to the west coast. You're going on a long road trip. I am. Now this and is what I brought with me. Uh -oh. This is a first aid kit, and I made sure that it was available. I've got everything in here from tourniquets to bleeding kits. It's in a box I made yeah. myself. So anyway, Dan, it was great to meet you. Yes, we made a lot of channels there. Yes, and it, yeah. this is. Tell us your. Tell us. My channel's a log father. My name is Jeff Hogue. I've been on YouTube. What a racket behind yeah, us! It's, on it's, YouTube it's, since sorry. 2012. So I've been at this a long time, and uh, I met a lot of wonderful people here. This is a wonderful. Did you have a good time? Yeah, great time, yeah. What was your favorite part? I here? think the reality, the, my favorite part was to know that people like yourself are legitimate people, real people. People I haven't met before, but you're an online presence. So, uh, but we're just normal guys all together. And we're not, none of us are in competition. We're all in cahoots. We have people like this man right here who came over from... All the way from Finland. Finland. Yeah, yes. Finlandia. Oh. And what, what do you uh, think so far? No, viime viikolla pistin katiskat järveen ja sorva on tullut ahventa itse asiassa enemmän kuin normaalisti. Oh, that was cool, Dan. Hearing like the drone. That's what the sounds of that event was cool. The all the engines running, the saws and stuff. Uh, yes. That's one thing that you just cannot escape. That's cool. Yeah, it it's nice to have that just like you said, the drone of there was always something kind of going on or you know, even even like with the machines running, you could still hear like the cracking of the wood being split, you know, over top of the machine. I, I like I was I was really I agree. That. Good stuff. Yeah. Despite all of the people, all of the machines and the action, Mama killed deer's eggs. She was sitting on them right in the middle of all of it. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's <laughs> I had her, right. I had her roped off for her own protection, but it worked and she's happy and she's still there now. Nice. That, that is yeah. good to hear. So, yeah, I just wanted to thank those that did take the time to let me uh, talk to them. I was looking for people with the blue shirts on, and then I was tracked a few of them down. So, thanks for being on the podcast. The, the shirts were a big seller. We sold out. We sold out pretty quick, too. Wow. Uh, Emily's T-shirt stand was very successful. And the raffles were successful. That was a big hit. Yeah, they were. Um, in fact, I just delivered the winner of the Bat 40 firewood pit and mini firewood uh, package was not there. And I uh, just met with him and delivered it to him. Perfect. Well, I and he hope, is very happy. Yes, I was going to say, I hope he realizes just what he has because that package included a dual signed autographed. Uh, trading card so he if he holds <laughs> on to that has a clear ticket to retirement right there yeah <laughs> but going back to the raffle and you and me had talked about this uh despite all of the cool things that happened this weekend with all of the machines and all of the excitement uh i think the best and most special moment was when our good friend Nick, known as Timon the Buckeye, won the chainsaw yes. uh, at the raffle. I thought that was I, – I, I, I don't think there was a single person disappointed that they did not win it. No. Uh, watching Nick's reaction, 
It was just awesome. Yeah, he <laughs> he said that of all the prizes, that was the one he wanted to win the most, and he put the most tickets into that yeah. bag, and then he won it. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. That was that was awesome. Yes, uh, that was indeed. a lot of fun. So yeah, it makes me. Um, I don't know. It just made everything worth it. I think Nick is cool. You know, he came to my first open house and he didn't quit working the whole time. Uh, he uh, just stacked wood and, um, and it was great to see him come back again. And then he won the, one of the big prizes. Dan, what was your, I, I think, you know, you're going to say Nick, but other than that one, you know, what, what did you find exciting or the most cool of the, of the event? I would definitely say interacting with, the people <laughs> i mean the machines you know it was great seeing some of the variations of like the the palax and the hacky pelky up close um some of the other processors uh we're going to get to the log ox but above yeah all of that <laughs> just meeting meeting some of the people that drove you know nine ten hours people that came from alaska uh oh, meeting gosh. them uh getting to talk to them and then uh, I believe his name's Paul that came from Canada uh -huh. and he stated like I, you heard there in the audio, like he stated he came there to see me and you. <laughs> so that's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. That was the part of where I was feeling pressure. Um, knowing that this just wasn't something where a lot of local people were just going to come to, but there were people that had seriously, invested their time and their money and their lives you know to come to little old Cortland, ohio to my wood yard and i didn't want to drop the ball i wanted to come through for them i wanted it to be a special occasion something to where no one could have said joe was you know just going through the motions here and the one thing that I have learned in life is that it, it, it's a goes back to baseball. There was an expression uh, Charlie Manuel uses. He is one of the great hitting coaches of all time. Know thyself. And one of the things that I know about myself is that I function best when I'm on a team. I'm not a sole actor. And the team that I had assembled was just a a plus with my good friend Mark, and Dale, and Steve, um, and then you know, all of you guys, um, Marty. And, um, I could not have done it without all of you guys. And, and I mean, let's just, you know, we can't, for, yeah, we can't forget about Jeff, the log father who we both met. What a nice man. And, you know, he volunteered to do the parking, which made the event because that parking lot could have turned into a disaster area without <laughs> organization. And he spent the majority of the morning out there making sure that that, oh, that upper lot got set up properly. Him. My good, my best friend, Frank, he was the best man in my wedding. And uh, John from Kellogg'sville, all three of them were out there and they dedicated their morning to making sure that parking lot got set up right. Had that not have happened, it would have been, <laughs> there would have been some upset people. No, no question. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was a huge factor. Uh, I mean, just, you know, obviously coming in, people, first thing they got to do, they got to park. And yeah, and, and. And he, the log father, was then traveling onward. Like he drove, I think, 20 some hours. What did he say? 20 hours there. And then he had another 40 more to go. Yeah. Ooh. He said it was 2,000 metric miles <laughs> <laughs> uh, that he drove to get to Cortland. And then he was driving way out west in Canada towards British Columbia, I think, to visit his daughter. I believe all the way to the coast. Yep. Yeah, and he's chronicling his trip on his YouTube channel, so maybe we could put a link in the description for him. He is a very nice guy. Yep, very nice. Uh, and then other YouTube channels that were there is Outdoors with Larry and Robin. They did a video of the event. The um, that I didn't meet. I never met this gentleman before. Off the trails, outdoors. And he made a awesome video of the expo. It's about a half hour long. And um, anything that you wanted to see, it's on his video. Excellent video that he did. Yes. And and yeah. one of the things that many people 
had on their video and one of the big i guess parts of this event was the unveiling of a brand new log splitter that yeah. that was pretty special and that was very, very uh, cool that was to awesome see. it was it was awesome the the mayor of Cortland heard about this and she issued a proclamation to the log ox family team and that was presented when we you know kicked this off and that was awesome because <laughs> yeah. you know the log ox the story of the log ox is special that's a family-owned company it was invented in the garage and now it is a worldwide phenomenon and so now they're spinning this success into a log splitter which fits right into that needed spot of home production and it was created and unveiled in my wood yard yes <laughs> at the international <laughs> firewood expo and it had a lot of attention throughout the day it came off very well yeah and it and it is it is something to see like it's it's exactly what you know they said it was going to be different than or it's different than any log splitter out there and yep. um i know that they were just this is like just early on in the stages i think this is like their first prototype of it but it was very well received. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was. My uh, high school helper, Robbie, and he's gotten to know, you know, how things go with the firewood industry now working around me. He said that, and he was all over the place this whole day. He said that the log, the timber ox, that's the name of the splitter, had a lot of attention. It had a crowd around it all the time. And he said, he said it is banging out a lot of wood he says it is making a lot of wood fast and um he was right you know their area was just covered with splits because they were using yeah. that timber uh the timber wolf uh conveyor uh, to keep them clear down there but he said it was working fast and it did it has a fast cycle time and it has the adjustable stroke so it doesn't have to make that full travel um, and what I like about it is the footprint. It's smaller, but it's very powerful. You can still put a full length log in there, you know, an oversized log if you had a, an outdoor wood boiler. And then if it's in your, just not taking up a lot of space, it doesn't have like a weird, you know, like these I-beam splitters. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. And, and I think eventually we're going to have to invite Austin back on to go a little more in depth with the whole log ox <laughs> or timber ox splitter just because you know i don't i don't want to leave anything out i think it'd be good to have him on to talk about it again i think so too because it is it is going to be a widely recognized uh log splitter yes you know i really do think that uh, you know years down it's going to be a a major presence in the market just like the log ox is everyone knows what that is yes they do and i really think that splitter is going to be the same because i did a video on that um that, that got me thinking you know a lot of these splitters you think of the homeowner splitters these big box store these i-beam splitters are so slow and then you got the commercial grade ones what's missing in the middle you know you got the kinetic splitters maybe the easton made ultra there's just something missing and i really think that this timber ox is it it is yeah. a major league it is going to be a dynamite splitter uh and i still have it it's not mine to keep it's still the prototype i am to use it and show it um you know and, and just give a, a brief overview of it, which I'll, I'll try to get that onto an upcoming video uh and then it's going to get shipped off to the next guy maybe we'll send it to you <laughs> And then the other big thing we need to cover here in this episode uh, before, you know, we wrap things up because there's so much to talk about and discuss about what happened last weekend. But I think everyone's mind is on, will this be happening again next year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had, let's, I'm going to be totally upfront honest here with everyone. I am just me, you know, and if you noticed, I didn't have a video put out about this and that's just cause I was just overrun with, 
I, I felt like I needed to be there in the moment. People were there that drove a long way to see me. I wanted to see them. I tried doing a video here and there, and I just couldn't get it done because I had to prioritize. Um, I can only do so much by myself. I have a team, and I, um, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to pay them. I don't know how to compensate them. I offered uh, a couple of my core people money, and they turned me down. I'm thinking about taking them out to dinner. Uh, I don't know my extent that I can go with the property owner <laughs> because I was turning people away that wanted to be here. And I have the county that's interested in this, and they're talking about offering, you know, we could get this moved to the county fairgrounds, which we have an excellent county fairgrounds. So the short answer is yes, despite the stress that I was under. And it wasn't <laughs> unpleasant, though. It was just something that had to get done, you know. Um, you know how, like, if you have a graduation party at your house or a family reunion at your house, you're thinking, oh, my God, when, you know, when it's over, I'll never do this again. You know, then, like, three or four months later, it's really not that bad. Yeah. I didn't feel this at the end of this day. I felt energized. Yes, I was tired. Yes, I was exhausted. But I loved it. And I do believe that me and you and, you know, our core group here, we're in a unique position. And I think that everyone saw the utility of a firewood-only trade show. The firewood industry needs this. You know, and we're in a position to bring it. And if you haven't been around me long enough to know that I am not fooling around. <laughs> you know, I am, I am not here to uh, play patty cake. Uh, I mean, I have fun. I don't take myself serious, but I take what I, you know, I'm taking this serious. I want this to be successful. So the short answer is yes, but where and how and what it's going to look like, I don't know yet, but we're going to get this figured out and we're going to, uh, and we'll be in touch. <laughs> nice. There. Think, how'd you like that answer? I think that is what everyone wants to hear. I think I think everyone is I think people are excited for next year already. I think I think they're already looking forward to it. So don't you think, Dan, that there's something about a firewood show in the spring? Yes. Yep. And I think people saw it. That had always been in my mind. You know, when you go to the Paul Bunyan show. You know, number one, it's a timber show. And yes, the firewooders are there, but it's, you know, it's in the fall. It's chilly. There's that smell of smoke in the air and it's awesome. But it's the fall. Your firewood should have already been made. And that's where I think the spring is where these firewood shows should be because that is where people are looking for their new machine, upgrading their splitter from last year, getting that new saw, you know, the new, um, convenience you know the new device the new pick a rune the new log ox the chain yes. locker yep all of these things it happens in the spring and we don't have a we don't have a firewood only trade show number one and we don't have it in the spring number two and uh i'm here to tell you i think i think we're on to something dan i think we are and i'm looking forward to you wherever it is yeah you know, fairgrounds, your wood yard, uh, wherever it ends up being, I'm yeah, I'm ready. I think that I see the positives and negatives from both being at the fairgrounds or being at my wood yard again. The important thing for me though is to make sure that the other manufacturers um know about this, number one, but number two, that they realize that this isn't just some Mickey Mouse operation, you know? And I think that the, the manufacturers that came to this year's would vouch for all of us, that would vouch for this, you know, that this is for real, it's legitimate, it's worth their time trucking all their equipment in, you know, thousands of miles to come to this little town here in Northeast Ohio. And that is my hope is that, you know, like, Okay, Easton Bay knows who I am. Wolf Ridge knows who I am. Yappa, of course, you know, all of these guys. That's kind of like just from the YouTube thing. But what about all these other firewood companies out there that may not know who I am or the YouTube community is? 
uh, and they may not believe that this is a legitimate, you know, uh, credible operation. I think that you cannot come out of this weekend with any doubt in your head right now that this could be the thing for the firewood industry. Well, I believe uh, I've heard you say this line before. When it comes to starting a business, the best time to start is yesterday. Yes. So the best time to start planning for the 2025 International Firewood Expo, yesterday. Get going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't really believe that, do you? I'm still tired. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. I just, uh, I need a, I need a break. You know, I missed uh, one of my first videos in a long time. There's absolutely no way I could have got a video put out for Sunday. It just wasn't going to happen. And there may not even be one this week. <laughs> just tired. <laughs> my feet hurt. I'm still sunburnt. I'm my head hurts. I had a headache all day yesterday, and I don't even suffer headaches. And, well, um, yeah, once I get rested up, we'll be right back at it though. Rest up and well, yeah, once you're ready, we'll start working on planning things out. And I, cause I think that's going to be one of the things that with the vendors and even with the people and getting the word out there, you know, we can, we can, as soon as we know, we can start building on it and yeah, make there's a lot of bigger. people there, Dan, there, we was. didn't really even take an official head count, but I mean, there was a lot of people. The, I spoke with the food trucks. They were all very happy. Uh, Joe, who was there last year that got overrun, said there he may he served even more this year. And we had two other food trucks there. Right. So, yeah, wow. they were very happy. Um, and I know if one thing for sure, I'm putting you in charge of the porta potties next year. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck, man? Those porta potties, <laughs> you can't get over how expensive those things are. Good heavens. <laughs> For a weekend. Just save those <laughs> IBC tote bladders and we'll make one. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put up some blue tarps and some uh, some yep. poles, you know, for a, a blind. Uh, good gosh. There you expensive? go. Yeah, the porta potties, the party tent. You know, there's uh, all the diesel fuel because I had to fill that skid steer back up, you know, and uh, there's just a lot of hidden expenses that I wasn't aware of. The T-shirts. Um, yeah, but I'm, ta I'm taking care of my group. I'm taking care of my team, though. That's, that's for sure. All right. Yeah. Well, with that, I think we need to let you go get some rest so you can start this venture for next year yes the my the couch better. is calling me <laughs> <laughs> my couch is calling me and i still have a business to run too you know oh that's right there's that isn't there <laughs> yeah i gotta run this business all right well dan i want to um i want to thank you though personally for what you do and what you brought to the table i honestly if if you couldn't come i wouldn't I wouldn't have done this. I swear. Oh to my you. goodness. I'm serious. I wouldn't. That's what you mean uh, to me as a friend and to, you know, the firewood industry, you're that important. And for you coming here, you know, that I think uh, framed the entire event and, you, you know, know, and Scheib and Adam and Doug, um, you know, our, our core, our core people, Bob and Marty, Log Holler, Jesse, Nathan, all of these guys, you know, yeah. that are in and around the, the Ohio wood burner channel. Um, it would not have happened without you guys. The, That's what you mean list, to me. The list goes on and on, but I, uh, you are and very well. Sam, Joe. my guy, Sam, you know, from Cortland mower, you better believe it. Yep. Yeah. Andrew, uh, Lowry. I mean, what the heck? We had the factory from Finland here. Serious. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Dan. Uh my couch is calling me and I'm gonna uh I'm gonna heed that call. All so right. how about maybe we strike up the band and why don't we thank everyone for tuning in to the Woodhounds podcast? Yes. Thank you all and especially thank you all who were listening that were at the expo. I think, you know, that's the one thing it wouldn't be much of an expo without people there attending it. And, and they came. 
and the AASU did. So thank you very much for coming to the expo and thanks for tuning in to this episode of the podcast, the Woodhounds podcast, the number one firewood podcast in the world. And Dan, I want to tell everyone out there as well as you to stay safe and consider next year coming to the International Firewood Expo 2025 and have a great day.